Pulse oximetry is a very popular, non-invasive methodology used to measure oxygen saturation of hemoglobin, otherwise known as SpO2, and it also measures heart rate. This technique is extremely easy to use and is relatively inexpensive. Pulse oximetry is based on the fact that oxygenated hemoglobin has a different absorption spectrum for electromagnetic radiation than does deoxygenated hemoglobin. The technique uses a sensor or probe which can be placed on the digits, ears, nose, and even the forehead. This particular model has a finger probe. Inside this probe there are two light emitting diodes or LEDs on the left hand side and on the right hand side there is a photon detector such as a photodiode. For this particular probe one of the LEDs emits visible red light at a wavelength of 660 nanometers while the other LED emits invisible infrared radiation at a wavelength of approximately 905 nanometers. Deoxygenated hemoglobin absorbs more strongly at 660 nanometers than does oxygenated hemoglobin. Conversely, oxygenated hemoglobin absorbs more strongly at 905 nanometers than does deoxygenated hemoglobin. The ratio of the oxygenated to deoxygenated hemoglobin can be determined from the ratio of the observed absorbances at 905 and 660 nanometers. From this information, the percent SpO2 can be calculated via an empirically determined calibration algorithm performed by the manufacturer of the instrument. The LEDs in the sensor emit photons of radiation, either red light or infrared radiation that pass through a relatively translucent part of the body. For the case where the instrument has a finger probe, this of course would be my finger that the radiation passes through. The photons that successfully pass through my finger are subsequently detected by the photon detector. The photo detector thus measures the intensity of the transmitted signals at 660 and 905 nanometers. In order to properly measure the oxygen saturated hemoglobin percentage, the oximeter must accurately remove those contributions to the absorption spectrum that are constant in time. These constant contributions would be, for example, from the thickness of the tissue in my finger skin hue, light intensity, and venous blood. Removal of the time invariant contributions to the signal will leave those contributors that vary with time including the arterial volume and the oxygen saturation of hemoglobin. This allows the pulse rate to be measured and subsequently the calculation of the oxygen saturation. The pulse oximeter is based upon Beer's Law, an empirical relationship that describes how three variables affect the absorbance of a substance. Beer's Law is a simple expression given by capital A equals lowercase a times lowercase b times lowercase c, where the capital A is the absorbance, the lowercase a is the constant of proportionality known as the absorptivity, or simply the likelihood that a photon will excite a given molecule b is the path length, and c is the concentration of the analyte of interest. Strictly speaking, Beer's law applies only in the limit of zero analyte concentration, and it applies for monochromatic or single wavelength electromagnetic radiation. In the real world, though, it's a reasonably good relationship as long as one limits the measured absorbances to between 0 0.1 and 1.0. Beer's law is successful because one can make up several calibration standards containing the analyte of interest at known concentrations and subsequently measure the absorbance of each calibration standard at a given wavelength. These data are then plotted on an absorbance versus concentration plot like you see now. From this plot, a linear least squares analysis will give the equation for the calibration line. In this example, that line has an equation of y equals 0.2. 001 times x. One can then take a solution containing the analyte of interest at an unknown concentration, measure its absorbance, 
and determine the concentration from the calibration curve as shown by the dashed red lines. It is easy to see that the application of Beer's Law to practical problems is not very involved. Here we have an instrument known as a spectrophotometer which can easily measure the absorbance of a solution that is contained in a square holder called a cuvette. This particular spectrophotometer is connected to a laptop computer via a USB cable. The computer displays the absorption as a function of wavelength. We have absorbance on the y-axis and the wavelength on the x-axis. Here I have a red solution in a cuvette which I will now place into the spectrophotometer so that we can measure the absorption spectrum. This particular instrument collects the absorption data for all the visible wavelengths simultaneously. Of course, a pulse oximeter only collects the absorbance data at two wavelengths. I will now start the data collection. We can clearly see the absorbance as a function of wavelength. Note that this red solution strongly absorbs in a region that is not red, but in the blue and green regions. To help us view this data better, I will turn on the auto display or uh, auto scale function, and we see that the peak becomes a little nicer to look at. I will now stop the data collection, but I want to uh, keep the data on the screen so that I can compare it to the next solution that we will measure. The next solution that will be placed into the spectrophotometer is a yellow solution. Notice that the yellow solution strongly absorbs in the blue and violet regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. Once again, we will stop the data collection and keep that data displayed. The next solution that we will measure is a blue solution. we see the blue solution strongly absorbs in the red region and it also has a minor component in the blue and violet regions. What these three solutions show are that the primary colors have very different absorption spectra. If one were to measure a solution with those colors, one can choose the appropriate wavelength at which to make the measurements. For instance, if I wanted to measure a blue solution, I would choose a wavelength in the red region Likewise, if I wanted to measure a yellow solution, I would choose a wavelength in the blue or violet region. What if we had a solution that was green, which of course is a mixture of yellow and blue? Let's take a look at this green solution. Once again, we'll keep the old data on the display. we can immediately see that this solution has two components as expected. One component is yellow and the other component is blue. In summary, we have seen that pulse oximetry is a methodology based on the absorption of electromagnetic radiation by oxygenated and deoxygenated hemoglobin at two different wavelengths in this particular case 660 and 905 nanometers. Based on these interactions, the pulse oximeter can easily determine the percent SpO2 in the blood and the heart rate.